Hello, Hamilton Elite. We're here with Delaware Valley University men's coach, Chris Zerpoli. Please, uh, coach, tell us a little bit about your school and your sports program. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for providing us uh, with this opportunity. A little bit uh, about DelVal. Uh, we were founded in 1896, originally as an agricultural school. We've obviously grown a bunch since then. Uh, we had obtained university status uh, four or five years ago, and that allowed us to add some majors and, and add uh, various programs. And, you know, with that came an addition of a farmer's market staying with our agricultural team. So uh, we've really seen the expansion of campus um, the, the past five years since we obtained university status. Uh, we're a small private school located in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. All total now, we're about 2,200 um, students, and that's between who we have on campus and commuter. All right. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your coaching style and, and uh, how you like to go about coaching at Del DelVal? Sure. Um, first of all, I, I would like to say we're really lucky. We have a, an amazing assistant coach. His name is Fraser Colmer. He comes from Southampton's Academy, uh, played Division I soccer at Radford University, and we're lucky to have him uh, for whatever time it is, you know, the, the next few years. Uh, he's, he's bound to be a head coach someday, but uh, while he's here, we're certainly uh, really thankful and lucky to have him. So I, I'm going to tie kind of my coaching philosophy in with his, and we're believers of there, there's really no great secrets to success in the game of soccer. Uh, you know, if you work hard, you're prepared the right way, you're going to see the benefits of it. We really try to put our guys in the situations in training that they'll see in games. We're big believers, and it's something we take from the Messiah method for everyone that's familiar with Messiah. If you relate training to the game as much as possible, then uh, the game almost becomes a little bit easier. So we're big believers in just putting our head down, working hard, preparing the right way. Obviously, we're going to focus on all four pillars of the game, but we really don't try to overthink it. Um, if, if you prepare the right way, things take care of themselves on game day because you've already done it. All right. Um, what do you believe separates your school, Delaware Valley, from other division, not only Division three, but do D2, D3s, or sorry, D1s, um, academically speaking? So we have a new pr program. It's probably about five, six years old now, and it's called E360, Experience 360. Uh, DelVal really prides ourselves on being the leaders in experiential learning. And what that means is before our guys and girls graduate, that we're putting them in the real world so they get experience, so they know what they're getting into. Uh, you know, the, the moment they get on campus, we're helping them to write a resume, to learn how to interview, to put a cover letter together, to build your references. Um, so we really pride ourselves on, on that program, E360, and it's a component that if it's not, it's not met, you can't graduate until you check the different boxes of E360. So it's something that when we sit down with recruits, uh, it's usually the first words out of my mouth is E360. And no matter how long we talk to someone, I say, if there's a pop quiz at the end of this, the thing you need to remember is E360 because Really, the value in DelVal comes in with that program. Uh, you may look at a school and it's not exactly apples to apples. One school might be financially more affordable, but at the end of the four years, if you don't have a full-time job and, and our rate, I think we're at 96% of our graduating class have a full-time job within six months. Um, so if you save a couple thousand a year, but when you graduate, you don't have a job for six months. You don't have a job for nine months. You don't have a job for a year. Well, the money you just saved over the course of four years has now caught up to you. Um, so, so the real proposition value with DelVal really comes in with E360, Experience 360, and making sure our guys and girls are, are prepared to go into the real world. Very interesting. So change it back to soccer related. Um, how many recruits do you typically um, recruit in a, in a typical year? It'll, it'll depend year to year, but I would say on average, 
we look to replace what is leaving plus start to build for the future. So we're somewhere between seven to 10 on a yearly basis. And again, that could change, but we wanna make sure we're not over recruiting, that the guys we bring in are gonna be on a roster where they're happy and that we can find reps, useful reps, useful minutes for everyone. We don't, we don't wanna have a roster of 35 guys. It's a good problem to have that you have that depth but there's no way you can keep 35 guys happy. So when we rebuild our roster year after year, when seniors graduate, we try to keep the number of 28 as our max uh, and really not get above that. All right. Um, how this has been a very challenging spring, obviously a lot of time lost looking at uh, you know, different recruits. How has this year been different from any typical year that you've had previously? Obviously, the big change is now, you know, we were dependent upon February, March, April, maybe even May to get a, a head start on the 2021s. So we were not done our recruiting class when, when all this really started. And um, so we had to figure out different ways. Uh, Del Val has been really great overall our admissions team, everyone, and figuring out different ways that we could still have visits, we could still connect with recruits. Um, I think the part of it of being able to go out and see a guy, identify him, and then get the, the process going, obviously that's not there, so we have to adapt and we have to figure out, now we're, we're gonna rely upon what their club coach says, what their high school coach says. We might go out and, and ask just for video of them doing simple things in the backyard. So where we might have, you know, the benefit of being able to go out and see guys in February, March, April, identify them, recruit them, bring them in. Obviously, we don't have that. So uh, it's challenging for sure, but we've been able to, to make some changes and we can still meet with recruits, albeit virtually. We can still show them the campus, albeit virtually. Um, so we're making do just like everyone else. All right. Well, what do you think that the 2021s and even the 2022s should be doing during this time? I think it's a great time academically for them to raise their GPA. I know um, with some of the SATs, if they were later, that those were postponed. But I think this is a great opportunity for student athletes to get their GPA up. And I'll use Del Val, obviously, as an, our, our example here. We have gone SAT optional. So we're now placing a bigger emphasis on the GPA. Uh, we're we're kind of saying the standardized test doesn't matter as much as your body of work over the four years. So while you're at home and you have all the time and you have all the resources, um, it, it's certainly a really good time to be able to boost their GPA uh, so that when a, a small school like uh, Division Three or Division Two looks at you where the only money we really can give is academic, we have that GPA that helps you financially. Uh, in terms of reaching out, you know, coaches are just as available as, <laughs> as we were. You know, we have our phones on us, our emails right in front of us, uh, texts, call us, all that. So uh, where they may not have film, uh, they, they can find ways to stay busy and that if they're reaching out to someone, if it's a letter of recommendation from a club coach or a high school coach, uh, you know, that certainly would go a long way as well. But for them, they should stay busy, stay in shape. Uh, who knows when we get through all this, um, something good will come of it eventually. But in the meantime, they just need to stay as prepared as possible, reach out to coaches, use this time to boost their GPA. Sounds very, sounds like very good advice. Um, tell us a little bit about what you personally not just now, but even in years prior when we didn't have this precedent, this unprecedented event happening, what do you look for in uh, recruits? So I, I, I stole this directly from Bill Belichick for those that are uh, NFL fans. Humble, hardworking, love the game, and then, you know, away from Bill Belichick and putting our own spin on it. Academically, they have to have their act together, and then off the field, they have to have their act together. We don't want to bring in a guy that is going to be at risk academically. We don't want to bring in a guy that uh, is going to be at risk uh, in the dorm rooms or outside of our campus. We want to make sure we're bringing in quality young men who check the boxes of what we're looking for. 
Uh, so humble, hardworking, love the game. Academically, they have their stuff together, and off the field, they have their stuff together. All right, Lynn, how about some of the things that, besides not having their stuff together, would you say <laughs> is, is not a, is, is kind of something that kind of you shy away from? So if we're out at a showcase or tournament, obviously before all this happened, and we, you know, we're really high on a guy, and we see he's getting yellow cards, he's yelling at his teammates, he's yelling at coaches, he's yelling at reps. Um, you know, we want to make sure that a guy is coachable, that he's going to be able to fit in with what we're trying to do with, with our culture. So the red flags or any of that, you know, anyone who doesn't seem coachable for a matter of reasons. Um, academically, we'll obviously take a look at your profile. And when we recruit guys, we try to get as much information as possible. So whether we're reaching out to your guidance counselor or everyone I mentioned before, if anyone comes back with a red flag in our reach out, um, that that's reason for us to pause and say, maybe this guy isn't worth it. Uh, so there's, it, there's a lot that goes into it. It's just like a job interview. You reach out to references and you collect as much information as you can before a final decision is made. Um, but anyone who, who behavior, you know, their behavior on the field uh, might be a problem or academically, it just seems like they're not motivated or anyone that doesn't seem coachable, uh, we would tend to shy away from. All right, just one final question. So typically seniors go on and they graduate. Um, in the spring season, a lot of the, um, or the NCAA has ruled an extra year of eligibility for the spring athletes. So the, the kids that would typically graduate, they'd move on, you'd have the next group of freshmen coming on. Obviously there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to, to soccer and in the fall season and what, whether We'll have a, a season where they're leaving me school in the fall. <laughs> um, how would what what's the approach that you, or the the thought process about if if that is if that that does happen the seniors will have an extra year of eligibility. How would that affect the class of twenty twenty one coming the following you know the following year when those seniors do have an extra year of eligibility? We've seen this um, with our lacrosse team at Dalval, who had a really good senior class now. Um, and they were given that waiver, like you mentioned. So now they've had to pivot their strategy, you know, on the run here and figure out maybe we shy away from the number we were trying to reach because now we know we can bring back five, six seniors that normally we wouldn't have. So. Uh, you know, let's hope and pray we don't get into that situation where we do lose another year. Um, but if it happens, we have to pivot what our recruiting strategy is. And we'll have to figure out, A, what seniors want to take advantage of that and what guys actually want to come back. Um, and, and if that number skews high, we have five, six seniors that want to come back, then that's five or six less spots we look to fill. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we want guys to choose Del Val or Del Val. And obviously when you have your pie chart or whatever you do to, to figure out the decision, soccer is going to be a big part of that. Um, but ultimately, if, if you're coming to Del Val, you're coming there for the academics, you're coming there for E360. So if soccer has to get put on hold for a year, um, you know, you would still be comfortable in that setting. So, and, and, you know, we take great pride in being able to communicate and be open and say what's going on. So, if we we get to it, uh, we'll certainly make changes as we go and communicate out to our 21 recruiting class that, hey, look, um, you know, we're, we're looking to bring back five of our own seniors. So that might be five or six less spots that are available. Just letting you know where the numbers stand, but hopefully all that is still a good fit for you. All right, Coach, thanks for dropping by today. We really appreciate it. Hamilton Lee getting college perspectives. Um, any final words? No, I don't. Uh, let's <laughs> let's all stay positive during this time, and uh, we'll get out of it eventually. Something good will come out of it. It's hard right now to keep a positive attitude, but we all have to do our part, and soon enough we'll be back on the field. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it.